Good morning, this is Brian Whitten and ETR. Welcome back to the channel. I um, will go over a couple of things today. Um, one is initially for those who haven't actually been to the channel before, uh, but most importantly, um, I will show you a few things that are more relative to right now rather than an archaeological artifact or pyramid or whatever. I'm going to show you a few things that undoubtedly tell you the people on our planet that lead our world know exactly what I'm telling you is true. This event here is the beginning of what was a series of Im impacts used to tilt the Earth's axis and start this 6,000 year cycle that we're about to finish. On line A here we have these events, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, uh, the British nuclear test on Maralinga, uh, the Darwin, in Darwin there was a bombing of the HMA satellite in Darwin Harbour, the British war in Argentina, and 9-11 comes up here if you go upwards. So they know what's going down here. Um, I will show you this next impact after this one. So this is the one that first tilts the axis like this. Um, the entire process here, by the way, before I show you the sequence, the entire process here is to make an Earth that was standing straight on its axis like this, revolving around the Sun, or orbiting around the Sun, I should say, in a clockwise direction, so in other words, coming that way, it was still spinning anti-clockwise on its axis, and does for the entire period of time. Um, and the process here is that it, the, it changes the direction of Earth, uh, of a straight standing planet, going around the Sun clockwise to anti-clockwise. That is the process of this 6,000 years. The plane of rotation of Earth, if it is the plane of rotation, so the disk, or if you can imagine an imaginary disk that it spins around on around the Sun, flips 180 degrees like that, and it takes 6,000 years for that process to complete. Unfortunately, when it gets to the other side and this 180 degree flip like this has happened, this side here, the planet is picked up by one of the magnetic fields of the sun that does not affect it through the process of the cycle, but at the end it does. The skew angle of Earth's magnetic field against the field of the sun that I speak of is very very quick. As soon as the skew angle falls within tolerance the planet is ripped up straight like this, accelerates in speeds of rotation, accelerates through space and the mass movement is the upwards thrust of about 8,000 miles. I won't go through all of those things but what I will do today is go through one or two things that will show you without doubt the, that our leaders know full well what I'm talking to you about even more so than this. Um, this here, line A, I will do an insert picture I've showed you before. This line A here goes around through Antarctica, back up the other side of the globe, and goes directly through Uluru, which is in Northern Territory. I will go through the sequence now of the, the impacts that tilt Earth. This is the first one. It begins to tilt like this. The second one, I'll insert the picture for you, is Central America. This one stops the tilt of the Earth. The next two impacts create the Mediterranean. The first one lands near Spain, creates the start of the Mediterranean, and then the second one comes down from Northern Europe, about halfway along the Mediterranean, and goes all the way to the end of the Mediterranean, which is why the, well, they've got a rainfall, which is why the um, Mediterranean ends where it does and why the pyramids are below, because in actual fact those two impacts, one twists the magnetic field of Earth and the other one pushes the Earth down. In other words, it unlocks the planet okay, from this plane of the Sun. We see a lock and key in Egyptian mythology because that is exactly the process. Now I'm going to show you one or two things that will indicate without doubt they know exactly what I'm telling you is true. Now the first thing I'm going to show you, um, and by the way um, to all the people that live in this country, I'm not saying each and every one of them know. I'm merely saying the leaders of our countries certainly know what I'm saying. 
is correct. I told you that um, the third impact is in actual fact the beginning of the Mediterranean and that, that is the one that twists Earth magnetic field out of the suns. The one, that sun, the, the one that grabs us and throws us violently forward and does all such things of movement that I've just said. It is the one that twists the plane, in other words, unlocks it. Look what we've got on the Gibraltar flag. This is right, this is right where the event happened. They know full well what I'm telling them is correct. This is the second thing that I will show you today that is without doubt telling us the royal families of Europe, not just the Queen of England, these same things are on the Russian flag. I won't go through that one, I just will touch on a few today. She has a scepter in her left hand, representative the tilt of the Earth's axis. But what we want to have a closer look at is her little ball here. The motion that I've just told you, the plane of rotation of Earth around Sun, flips 180 degrees. It is during this portion of that 6,000 years where the Earth is going up over the top of the Sun and underneath. It brings the harshness of the poles that we see now in the Arctic Circle all the way to the equator. I can tell you now this cross is here at the top of this globe because when it is in this portion, it is deadly. You're in full months of full sun on half the globe. The other half is in full darkness for three months. The portion when it comes back down to the middle here during those cycles, well, I guess they're livable to a degree, but then you've got to eat something. How does anything grow when it's frozen for three months or burnt for three months? How does anything grow? How do the animals live? So I'm saying here, if there's anybody living in this portion of this cycle 3,000 years ago, they were certainly hardy people, and I can't see them doing it without help from those that come. I'm, I know the Aboriginals claim fame to being here 40,000 years, I can assure you you weren't. Um, I'm not saying you weren't here for long, long periods. Um, but uh, your people talk of the original people. There's probably a lot we are not getting told from a lot of people. Um, but certainly whoever was living here, I'll pat you on the back because if you can get through, any of your, your um, ancestors can get through this portion where it's going over the top of the sun, and underneath the sun for three months every year for 1100 or 1200 years that this effect is felt. Oh, I give you a pat on the back because I can assure you that time would have been extremely difficult. When we look at this picture of the inserted rock my son found, it was a night, I've gone through it before in another video, uh, it was a night after my sister's funeral where the meaning and knowledge of what that meant came to me, I knew what it meant straight away within about, my son sent me a picture and within minutes I looked at it, even though I'd had it many times before, held it in my hand, um, I certainly knew exactly what it meant. It was a very, very quick understanding of the lines. They weren't 100% correct, it was about 95% correct, but it certainly sent me on the right track and only within a week I noticed something on another rock I had, back to the TV here. We see the microscopic image, which was one of the very first I realized the logical placement of things on a river rock. Okay, um, and this was it. This was what I just told you about, the in incident at the bottom of South America. I saw this shape here as being South America. I saw the number four written in Roman numerals. I'll move that in just a little bit closer for you. I had a white piece here that had one bigger circle than a smaller circle, an arrow pointing down here from this circle, saying the bigger of these is hit here, the smaller one landed right where it was, Central America, right here. And I've got an arrow over here, like this on this line, telling me this is going like this here. You know, so it's getting I'm getting told this on a river rock. The important fact, and one I to discuss with you at this present point in time, is the date. I've had and been incorrect with the date at least three times. And my feelings at those times was that I was, well, I wasn't 100% sore, but I was pretty close to, you know, I thought that logically that looked like that was going to be the date. I actually think that it was probably more than likely possible. Those other dates are set up because they give the leaders 
So many chances. They've given them three or four years. I've been here for a long time. It's over three years now. I've been here from the very first video I put up was in 2018 in August on the 8th of the 8th, 2018. It's the first one I spoke of that had the tilt of the Earth's axis. It's not on this channel. It's on my old channel. But I wanted to discuss here the another date here with this being relative, and I do mention this, it's actually written um, and uploaded on Facebook some years back um, as just a reference as a possible date we were getting told, because what happens, that 4 actually changed, and I'll show you what it changed to. Now, the rock that I just showed you that had 4 in Roman numerals, I have made a video called the Programmable Rock, and I had images writing numbers just come and disappear. As soon as I understood what they meant, they just disappeared and I got a whole lot of new, you know, images or new marks on the rock. I'm not going to go into that, uh, but you can go and see the same thing. It actually happened on uh, this inserted image here. These lines on this rock were drawn in the middle of the video, so I won't go back there again. But once again, I want you to be aware that we've got a 17 in decimal now, where we had a 4 in Roman numerals. And this was when they were going to come out. If you get this in the... I know it's difficult. Once again, I will insert these pictures. It's difficult for me to take an individual picture and show you what happens when I'm making a video because this is by moving light around a rock that you get these images. Without the light moving in a still picture like this, you don't always see everything as clearly as you do in the video. But here the 17 is um, reasonably clear and easy to see here and we still got our shape of South America here so we know it's the same part of the rock. The 4 is written right there, the 4 in Roman numerals. And I always used to ask myself, why is the 4 in Roman numerals of Roman numerals? Why didn't they just write a 4 in decimal? If they're going to write 17 in decimal, we'll come to that. So anyway, I then realised that, and it said that this is the date. It, I, and I was working out how, but that's actually both those numbers set the date. It is the 17th of the 4th, in other words, April. The only April, that, or the 17th of the 4th, the only time Easter falls on that date, and Easter is very pertinent because it's the rise of Christ, the story, the truth. That's what it's talking about. Is in actual fact, this, this Easter... 2022, a week away, it'll be Sunday, next weekend, and that's going to be correct, I believe. I don't think I'm going to get it wrong, and I, I say that because there have been three attempts, there's a whole, a whole series on my channel here of how we've shown on the River Rocks what was an attempted nuclear blast. I won't go through that, but I will say there were three. There was one between 2019 and 2020. In Australia, where they lit up our eastern seaboard, Kangaroo Island and all these areas, there was smoke here. We couldn't see the sun for a week. That is when they moved these nuclear bombs that were delivered by UK and um, US military um, to Kangaroo Island, distributed using the Australian Defence Forces to... And I'm not, like I said, I'm not saying all the people in all these Defence Forces, but certainly um, there are people in command that know exactly what they're doing. Um, and they were shipped through our capital cities um, and scattered through the southern ocean up the eastern seaboard and I believe they were going to use the um, event that NASA spoke of which was a comet that travelled between Earth and Moon between Christmas and New Year as a reason for the tsunamis and so all these things to go down. That didn't happen, it was averted because the people coming back here went round and picked them all up. These are ones that were being put in place. Okay, The second event was the blocking of the Suez Canal by the uh, ship that obviously deliberately did so because then what happened is they then littered uh, the Mediterranean up the seaboard, up, the, up through Spain and the English Channel um, and there would have been bombs in the capital cities as well without doubt. Uh, that is shown to us once again. They are shown then told us on the rocks that as much as we are seeing the events being placed or the nuclear bombs being placed and the explosions that they've been taken away yet again. The third attempt was in the 6th of December 2020 when, um, Alec, uh, when Mr Putin visited India 
and there was one in New Delhi in the river uh, right near the Taj Mahal. And there were ones up outside in the west coast of India as well, as well as the entrance to the Red Sea. I won't go into that any further than say the series is there. You can go back and watch that if you're interested. Coming back to here though, we are now having 17 and I believe, like I said, without doubt, that will be the event. And now we're looking at uh, Easter. It's the only one since 2017. There's April 16th here, which is close, but it's not quite. There are no others here. Only the yellow one here is April 17th, 2022, 17th of the 4th, which are the two numbers that are on that rock. I'm going to show you one other microscopic image, which I believe is telling us and confirming that date. Now before I go on, I will say that the nuclear events that have been averted with the removal of these bombs, and one of my, uh, my other videos, I think my last video, uh, spoke about the Tonga event being not one that was natural, but it was actually set off that volcano by an atomic warhead that was uh, flown into it with a hypersonic missile. Uh, we've now got the Australian um, government talking about hypersonic missiles. The only way that, the only reason that Tonga event happened isn't because they didn't know you were going to do it. It was just far enough away for them to stop the tsunamis that it would have definitely killed many, many people in Tonga. Uh, that is why it was let off. Plus you can go out there and check and you will find that you will find the remnants of particles for atomic strike, without doubt. Um, but I wanted to come back here, like I said, um, our, and by the way we've got uh, a US Navy vessel that entered the Brisbane River only a week ago. It would have been bringing the hypersonic missiles and warheads um, that were going to be fired on our own people with the knowledge of our Prime Minister and Peter Dutton. You can be certain that they know that that was the intent of those hypersonic missiles. Um, these people are going to be gone before the end of this week. I can assure you that that is what I am seeing go down here. Remember that I told you some time in a video that I didn't, this is an image, a microscopic image off a rock, but I didn't put this here. I know how to save the desktop and change the desktop on my computer. I'm a computer engineer with about 40 years experience. I've met people smarter than me in the field, but this was changed. I didn't do it. And yet here we are, back to the very image and taking another look at it because it was so common, you know, it was in front of me. There were things I hadn't seen. I'm going to open it up now and show you a little, a few more things that we need to be aware of. In this, here we have the profile of a man's face and this is what appears to be his cape, goes up over the side of his head. But in his cape here, we're seeing him being taken away here. This is what's going to happen to these people. And I've said that they'll spiral out of the atmosphere, goes up here and you've got a few little planets. I will insert this picture for you so you get it nice and clearly. On this side here, this is very important, we see a question mark here and a dot there. But there are three other dots that light up here. And these actually make a cross. I'll, I'll zoom in, I know you're going to get the picture degradation we see when I film my my TV. I'm now I know it's not real clear, okay, but when it is, you can see a question mark here and a dot under this dot, but there's these three other dots here. And what they're making is a cross here. And we're saying here, the bottom of the cross, the bottom of the cross. That's made me realize what we were talking about here. We're talking about Easter. We're talking, and which is why we see the four in Roman numerals, because at the bottom of the cross, when Jesus is killed, it's a Roman that does it. That's exactly what goes down here, and this is what we're seeing. So we are seeing on this rock, which is probably why it was changed, and I can assure you, these people that are coming here, they can write on a hard drive when it's turned off. <laughs> They've given me quite a few examples of the skills they have, and I, uh, being an IT-related person, uh, I've had a few things that, happened even years before I really understood what was going down here. I've had a few examples showing me I've seen UFOs. I won't go through all that sort of thing. I'm just telling you that that image here was placed right in front of me. Now if you look down here, you've got all these people sitting here down looking over what's here. Up in this corner here, 
we have a man with a bowler hat on reading a newspaper. Well, what they're saying, before Good Friday, which is when that happens, these are all going to be gone, right? All of them. Now we're going to talk about the amount of people taken, and um, I just wanted to show you that that is why I believe it's Easter. We got 17, 4 on the one rock, which is the 17th of the 4th, and the 17th of the 4th, and the only one is the Easter I just showed you, which is this year, next weekend, on Sunday. That is telling us it's Good Friday, and this is saying it's happening because it's Good Friday, and I'm an Englishman here, so I'm reading left to right. I once again will install this picture for you so that we can see in this outback of Australia, which is why we are seeing that line go through Uluru and the number triple eight is very important. This is not the only place we're seeing triple eight. There are 888 Maui on Easter Island. When you draw a line from Easter Island to the Pyramid of Kephron and the Giza Pyramids, where you cross the equator is 6,888 kilometers from Easter Island. The 888 is relative to when they return. The 6,000 is the length of the cycle. So coming back here, I wanted to show you something. This inserted image now is the very first image I ever found on a river rock using external light. I can tell you now, I nearly fell off my camp chair because I was camping at a place called Patonga, which, strangely enough, is in actual fact um, at location 33.33.33 .33 south. Um, I nearly fell off my chair when I saw that, but back to the television here. Um, I want you to notice in that, uh, that image that you're seeing two rocks in the air. Those two marks are indicating two comets coming down of the woman standing there looking at it. The woman standing there looking at that is the Queen of England. Now back to the TV here, and this isn't the only one, I'll show you one more. There are times on Earth where the cycle of Earth is not this tilted access cycle. There are straight standing cycles and there are cycles where it is laid flat like this. The events that lay it flat are always two, they always come from the bottom like this and they lay the planet over this way or that way depending on which way the cycle is going to run, which way the planet's going around the sun. This is one of the events, so I'll move this in a little bit and we see that we've got two events on the bottom of the ocean here. You can see how wide they are, they scrape across here, one of them's bounced here, bounced across most of the continental landmass, hit here and made and created the New Guinea highlands here. The other one that you can see slide in from the bottom is Tasmania. You may laugh all you wish, but you go and have a look at geologists will tell you that the bedrock of Tasmania is not the same as the mainland. It's actually North American bedrock, that's what they say. They say it floated here through continental drift. <laughs> it didn't float, well, it did float here, up in the air, <laughs> and was propelled at the planet by the people that come here to do this. Um, the, like I said, the other event that you see tilt the Earth's axis is 600 kilometres wide. It's 2400 kilometres long. It's like an arrowhead. They fire it like this. They're very, very smart. And effectively, they're technically us. So we come back and understand that the measurements we're seeing here, the line that Uluru goes through, or the line, line A that I've showed you in the impact, the first impact, comes back up here, goes through the bottom of the Great Australian Bight, goes directly through Uluru. Uluru, by the way, is almost 666 kilometres. It's very close to being from the coast. It's also from that, this impact that I show you now, when I say to you these ones come from the bottom, the one that I show you now is, in actual fact, the centre. This is what I'm saying. You get three impacts when you're going to tilt the axis, always. That's how you know where you are. You've got to be able to identify in the cycles of everything what portion of the cycle you're in so you can understand what the outcome is. Um, so what we're doing here is we've got 666 miles here from Uluru to that very first impact. We're also seeing across here 666 miles and we're getting told in this setup here
the length of time and the sentence of these bunch of people that are going to get taken away here because the 888 here I thought was a date, it isn't, it's relative to the amount of people are taken from Earth. That's exactly what it is, which is why the 888 Maui on East Island are figures of people. Big people. They're big for more than one reason as well. But we'll see, at this point, it's from the top down. That's how they'll take people away. From Queen Elizabeth and the Royals and the World Elites, they go down. The first lot of number of people I thought were going to be 666, and I still expect that's the case. It may be more, it may be a little less, I don't know, but I will tell you that we are getting told, definitely, the full and total amount of people that are going to be taken away here. So that's what we're seeing. This here um, is also 888, the line that is created by the tilting of Earth's axis of the Tropic of Capricorn and the Tropic of Cancer. The Tropic of Capricorn is right here. It's 888 kilometres exactly down through Uluru to the coast. Exactly 888. That's the one thing that is exact. That's also exact. That is exact to the centre of the impact over here from Uluru. This is just a little bit off. So it's saying to us, yes, well, this may be not... It's when they are a little bit off, they intend to be a little bit off. And they say, it's, you've got to think more about what it is you're, we're talking about. So what we're talking about here, this 88 that I thought, or 888 that I thought related to the date they came back isn't. It's actually related to the amount of people that get taken away. The sentence though, here we see this. That's why we see 666 across here. Because the 666, the bunch of people that are taken here, they, this is their length of their sentence. This doesn't happen here. The Earth does not get tilted flat like this for another 16,000 years. So the minimum sentence is 16,000 years. They have showed, and you know without doubt, the people in our world now are trying to look into time travel. <laughs> you tell why. I can tell you now the tools required to do so, they will never get. So no, they don't want at any point the people that are getting removed here to exist not just in an advanced world where they tilt planets and build stars and all such things. The one thing, without doubt, they do not want these types of people with this mutation. And I will show you how we know how that mutation occurred. When we don't want these people, without doubt, existing in a world where time travel is possible because you'll never get them. This has gone on for over 80 million years, and you could say, well, the fact that it's gone on for 80 million years means that maybe they did get into the future. I don't think so. I believe that we are being told here that this process has gone on for 80 million years because, number one, it can't be fixed. And you could say, well, if they're so smart, why don't they just fix the problem? Um, unfortunately, when I explain to you how it's caused, I think you'll understand why, and certainly the risk of having those people in an advanced society that can use time travel, they get back and infect the other galaxy. That's another another thing we're being told. So without doubt, in here I will explain to you a few other factors we need to know. We see the 666 taken away here. This is 60, 666 miles, whereas this is kilometres. And the reason for that is to let you know that this is an imperial measurement. It's an imperial measurement because they're talking about the royals, the imperials. They're the ones that are going. From them down, that's who's going. Above that, you get 222, left of the 888 that you've got there. 222 is a very, very important figure. It's in actual fact telling us where the problem arose, in my opinion. And what I mean by that is the 222 is the second galaxy, the second star, and the second planet is where the issue arose. Before I move away from the sentence length of time, I want to discuss these. They're the Paraka skulls. There are a whole lot of mumbo jumbo we hear about these as well, but I can tell you, and I've listened to it, and I, I, the funny thing is, is I actually had these a book when I was a school kid in a, in a Catholic private school in the library saying these people were alive when the Spanish first arrived in 
the Americas, in South America. I can tell you who these are. These are those very people. The ones that get that penalty and get put back on the centre star in our star array. I will insert that picture for you. The very centre star marked X is a star array. And all those other stars there are ones that we're being populated and filtering this process or filtering this behaviour or the corruption. And I will explain to you how we have shown what, how, how it's caused. But before I go on to that, I just wanted to let you know that this is another thing. These, these are the heads of normal humans that have spent 16,000 years or more on a star X. You're getting pulled apart. You're about to die with your, in your last breath back five minutes earlier. Over and over and over and over. That's why I've tried so long here to tell you what you need to know to make a sensible decision. Shipping a whole lot of hypersonic missiles into the country for the, in the last week with an intent to fire on the people of our land here, I would have no doubt that it's happened in more places than Australia, if not a very good part of your plan. So welcome to what you're going to look like in about another 16,000 years time. And you will be placed back on the planet here, Earth. The very next time it is going to be laid like that, you will be put back there and you will take... That is where you will meet your real maker, not just the ones that manage us. Now as I show you this picture, I will insert it for you so you see it nice and clearly, or at least as clearly as I can show you. Whilst we're looking at that picture, I will discuss with you about time frame. We've got a nice bunch of kookaburras having a bit of a whistle or yell or laugh this morning. That's fine. Um, what I wanted to discuss with you, you can tell I'm in Australia. <laughs> That's a dead giveaway. For anybody that has been to Australia, you would have heard those birds do their laugh as they do. Um, when we look at the 888 Maui on Easter Island, what I want you to do is we see 111 regularly. If I do this inserted picture here of the glyphs that we see in the Luxor Temple, I think, in Egypt, um, where we see helicopters, craft, um, boats and so on. We see the number 111 and then number 1111, okay? I want you to do me a favour if you would with the maths, a little simple sum. I want you to get, um, work out what 11.1% of the world population of 7.9 billion is, okay? Um, and I want you to, once you've got that figure, subtract it from 888. You will find that is the number of people going. I think it's about 876 million people. That won't be wrong either. That's why it's written the way it is and where it is, right in the Australian outback. That is the other end of the cycle. That is the amount of people that are going to be taken. Whether they are all taken in the one night, maybe they are now because you've been given so, so, so long to come good. And now, I guess my words here do not reach everybody, but they only need to reach you a lot. It's my, my process, that's why I never worried about views, because it was only ever you lot that needed to know. And you already know because you've tried to kill billions of people on multiple occasions. Now coming back to the problem, and this is where I said to you in my last video called The End, that the problem does not happen when we have the very same cycle as we have now with the Earth spinning in the opposite direction. So in other words, if the Earth is not spinning anti-clockwise on its axis, but going around the Sun anti-clockwise, Okay, so it's spinning clockwise on its axis. In other words, the sun's going to rise in the west and set in the east. We don't have the problem. This issue does not happen. These very people that failed do not fail when the earth is spinning on its axis in the opposite direction. It is, happens only when we spin anti-clockwise in an anti-clockwise direction around the sun. So coming back now to this image, 
and understanding what we are seeing. What makes this letter XE here, and I know it's not 100% clear, but this is the thing, that it's, this is how they send a message to you. I'll zoom in a little bit, and I've shown you this portion of this rock before. This portion here, this, this is part of a rock, okay? It's microscopic, and it's when you turn the light off the microscope and then run it from an external light source, which is how all of these images on these rocks are obtained. You use an out, you know, a, a light source outside of the one that is used by the microscope. Now I want you to be aware of what we're seeing here. This XE is really difficult to get that, and this guy's face, his eyes are so clear here in the image, I'll insert it for you. I know when we take this photograph here, you're not seeing it as, as well as it does on the picture. Photographing the TV has never been particularly good. But XE is really difficult. You can get the X real good, or you can get the E real good. It's really, really hard to get it where both are very clear. And this guy's face is here. And you notice that he hasn't got, you can't see his lips or his mouth because he's wearing a mask. I say to you that this was relative to XE being a rocket fuel, which it is, um, and that this was talking about the attack in Tonga because the other images of nuclear explosions are on this rock, imply underwater activity. But we're now looking at another thing. This is like I said, most of these things have more than one meaning and you've got to be you know, a little bit more savvy on what the message is. We are seeing no facial part here because he's wearing the mask. But this is for a different reason. This is telling us exactly what caused the problem. So we come here from another galaxy. We get to a new galaxy, our first galaxy, first travel outside of the galaxy we came from. We had accomplished many, many things. We were already building planets and guiding. You know, we were very, very smart bunch of people. We had evolved for many, many millions of years and this was our first travel beyond the galaxy of our origin. So we get here. We initially get here and think, well, we've got to build something to live on because there's not going to be something here. They probably went to a binary star system because at that point that's how they had existed in a binary star system and always gone to a binary star system to create what it is they needed to do. So they get here, they then create a binary star system um, and the planets exist within it. And this ship that came here is huge. I would expect that we've seen it near the sun or something similar to it. It's about 10 times the size of Earth and it is a cube. And we also know that the people in the um, Middle East, the Islamic people walk around a cube. It's, they know it's coming. And there's a lot of people on earth that know of what, what's going to happen. I'm not saying that there are not people and leaders of our earth that do not tell their people the truth. They're probably the ones us like go in and bomb and kill and burn their books. Anyway, another story. But I wanted to come back here and understand what we're being told. And this not quite being real clear and being created from a chip with this, it look like fiber optic cables coming out of this thing. And this thing here. Now we've got another story. This guy's masked all right, and you can't see his face. He's wearing a mask because he's a doctor. And this Xeon XE, which is an element used, we still use it now. It's used in uh, medical diagnosis. So I think we're getting told, without doubt, in the imagery that we're seeing here, that the element that we're using even now has we've had a problem. If you stop and ponder the situation here, if we came from the other galaxy, our perception would have been that we were going to go, if we were going to go in interstellar, that we would have gone to another binary system because we evolved in a binary system. When we get to this galaxy here, we create the first system. So in other words, this is why we're seeing 222. Two, two. Second galaxy, second star, second planet. We get to the galaxy here, we build the, we first of all go to a binary star system. We create what we need to support all the people that have come on the craft that we've come here with. We now have to go and see if there's other intelligent life forms in the galaxy. We spend some time looking. There is nobody here. There is no intelligent life. I'm not saying there wasn't life, 
I'm just merely saying there was no intelligent beings such as those we came with. And to think we came here alone only as humans is a stupid thing to think and uh, think you're only going those, those people that are getting taken back there, the 800 million or so, if you think you, the planet you're going to is own, only going to be people like yourself, you really are not thinking very clearly. That is obvious. Um, the mere fact you think you're going to get faster bombs and instead of them getting taken away because they're placed and you're going to fire them, my God, you people are the most stupid people that ever walked this planet. I've said that before too. Um, so back to our, our process here. So we get to here, we go and look and there's nobody here. So we go through a process of saying, well, if we keep the breeding cycles that we're going to go into now are one and two times a year, with one or two, maybe three months of a year where we can breed. That's where our Earth is going to be. And I would expect the people that leave Earth that have to go because of geophysical changes and our inability to either breed or even severe headaches or... Honestly, there's many, many people on Earth that cannot stay here with this new cycle. So about 3 billion have to go. Um, there's about f under, f under 4 billion staying and the under billion taken away, 870 million or whatever it was, are going to be taken away. So what we're seeing in the explanation here is the element, right, is when they, when they go to another star, instead of saying, well, listen, we've got a whole galaxy. I think the mentality here is, and we're taught in the Bible this as well, go forth and populate. That would have been in their idea. We're here, we've got a new galaxy, there's nobody here, we've got plenty of space. Let's create a planet or, or a system where we can breed all year. Whether they followed the rules of the other galaxy, whether they broke the rules, whether they thought at the time there wouldn't be a problem because they were smart, you know, obviously really smart. You know, and I think probably the latter. They thought, they didn't think they were doing anything wrong. They just had the space. They had the galaxy. They knew that they could breed all year round. I guess they would try to do so and populate more rapidly. So therefore they then create a single star system and manipulate the electromagnetic fields the way they're doing right here, right now. I want to tell you something. Mars. We are seeing Mars as a planet that has remnants of another civilization. We are saying the second planet on the second star, on the second galaxy, was the problem. So what happens, the, they draw, as they have done, and we've seen it at our own star, plasma getting drawn off our sun by, you know, something. They can't explain what it is, but there's been craft seen near the sun, drawing plasma from it. That is how they build and how they create the planets they need to within a solar system. So they've gone about this in a single star system. They've drawn the elements required from plasma. One of them is this element here, Xeon Xe. Some reason or other, this element here, it either isn't quite Xe, remembering that the processes here are all going to be automated, as are the medical processes. You're going to go in there and the doctor's not going to stand over, you're going to lie on the bed and these all electronic, you know, microscopic, doing whatever they have to do, would all be computer controlled and very, very automated medical processes. This is what's been going down here, as would be the identification of everything that has been pulled from a star in the plasma would also be a, you know, computer controlled and totally hands free from the perspective of humans. Okay, the identification of the elements also would be computer controlled. This is recognizing elements that it knew from another star. Maybe they pulled the plasma from a single star system and the element Xe did not behave in the way they are used to because it was not an element that was created in a binary system in the first place, or the fact that more likely the case, this Xe or Xeon element varied when it moved further out away from the star that created it. So in other words, its atomic structure changed. 
when it got out to the other planet, the second planet, which is why I think we are told the second planet. You know, if you didn't have a problem in the first planet, why did you have a planet or the problem in the second planet? Um, so I would say that that was it, and it's not only that either, because they manipulate the sun, our star, there's about a dozen rings that are like an orange peel. This field that I'm talking about that we were unlocked has got a dozen rings of rotation, right? a, a dozen orange peels. But that's not just a dozen, it's actually six and six. It looks like they can spin the inner core around the outer, and then there's another six rings beyond that that control Jupiter and all those other planets. They're sitting in a clockwise fields of the other field that extends beyond that twelfth ring. So it's actually six, six and six, and which whether they turn the outer six or the inner six I don't know, but that's, uh, I'm sure they'll let us know that. Um, so that is what I'm seeing as a, an, a very, very understandable reason why the problem happened. This is injected into us. We are also told it took 300 years for the problem to manifest itself. If I go back to the star array now, so when we come back to our star array now, and I've explained this before, we're seeing with the eight, eight light years between each of these stars, we're seeing the centre star, and then we're this whole process of the solar cycle, I won't go through all this because I have before, is 337,000 years. In the 337,000 years from each star we go to, and I'm certain this is what happens, that each star we go to every 50,000 years, we start with another star, but the star here, as we go through the 37,000 years, the star doesn't change, but its process within this array does. So that our planet now, or our star, was once an X star, it then moved to an A star, and we are just now changing. That this also indicates with this path here, the path of the red dwarf stars that fly through this series of stars. And what happens, the next time it's going to come to us, it goes back in the direction it came from. I won't go into how we know these things, because I've already done so, and I don't want to, the video's already getting a bit too long. Um, so that's what's going to happen. So we are in transition from an A to either a 1 or 2 function within this star array. I see when I've said to you before, and I have put a video up called um, our new system, Prometheus. I am under the opinion now that that was wrong, okay, because of these new understandings. And it makes sense, you know, if you're going to still exist within a single star system and we've already got the problem, we don't really need to be creating more problems by going out to Mars. And we see the separation here and we know, we know that people have got to leave Earth, there's half the population got to have to go, you know. Once this lot are taken, they've got no choice, they're going to go back here. That's where, that's why I'm trying to get you guys. You think you're the only people, there are only going to be humans here, you're a silly person, I can assure you. But you are certainly silly. I cannot believe you're still trying to kill as many of the people they come back for, even now, after the repetitious failures. Now you want to get faster rockets and <laughs> think that's going to make a difference, my God. Ah. But anyway, so what's going to happen um, when Nibiru comes through this system again, it's going to go back in the direction it came from, which would indicate it will be a one. But we're going to see a division here, so I'm absolutely certain half of us are going to go off to another star here. And that's what's going to happen. And the reason I think that, like I said, knowing 222 and that the problem initiated in a second planet, which is why we're seeing Mars the way it is, that we're not actually staying. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. I actually think we are getting divided into races. And I say that we are shown the sequences here of, I won't go through it again, but there are four 40,000 year cycles, two 48,000 year cycles, and one 65,000 year cycle that's shown at the top of this parchment. I will insert the picture for you. It is shown at the top here, circled. That is the cycles. It's a solar cycle, in other words, from the time that a star is occupied, or the planets within a star 
are occupied or within the system are occupied for the process to get all the way out here and filter the behaviour. I feel without doubt when we drop out of this here, we probably drop out as a binary star system. You know, with these lots together, it's difficult to know. We'll get that sorted out when they get here and they'll let us know. But I'm absolutely certain that we're going to probably make, well, I'm not 100% certain, but I would see the travel of us that get to have to, have to leave Earth we actually have to go to another star and another planet around another star and exist as we were eventually. Uh, even though we're getting separated like this as races, I don't think it's a long-term thing, you know. And whether we're allowed to travel back here, I'm not 100% sure, okay. There's going to be limitations. If we want to get rid of this thing and this behaviour, these people that think chopping up and eating little babies and raping children is acceptable, or the genocidal maniacs that run our um, armed forces here. They want nothing but death of millions of us. You know, you, you seriously don't want people like that in a, a situation where you've got time travel. That's what I'm saying to you. They'll show you time travel all right, it'll happen right there and you'll die over and over and over and over, which is exactly what the Paracas skulls are about. Now one more thing before we finish up, having discussed what caused the problem, I thought this was interesting and I will go back just a tad in what we've discussed. These pillars were found all over the world at one point. It was when I was working out the requirements, what were required from a continental perspective of how the Earth acts and behaves within these two opposing fields of the Sun. So in other words, once it stood straight like so, the Earth needs to be balanced like a flywheel. Anything that is running within two opposing electromagnetic fields needs to be balanced and the Earth is not in that state at the moment and many of the land masses need to be cut and moved. This is the pillar that was in Utah. It's very interesting, the head we see here. <laughs> I don't know if a lot of people notice that but uh, there's a reptilian head <laughs> carved into the rock here, a split behind here and there's water coming out behind here. Where that water is coming from I do not know. But the process is that the water and the pressures of the ocean are what is used to lift the land mass off the crust of Earth, and that is how they do it. The cut that I told you that came from this location, here in Utah, went to here. The Utah pillar is here, up to the very finger of Lake Superior, here. And it, that is the break that goes across this continental mass. I've also spoken about the West Coast here and shown you that in my other videos, but I wanted to show you this because I got to thinking the other day and I thought, well, this is interesting. What we actually see when we go from the Utah Pillar to Roswell, it's 888 kilometers again. And then I started thinking about Roswell and the line that you see drawn across here is to the very first Ford factory that was in Detroit. And you notice these lines are parallel for a very good reason because they're telling you that what was found in Roswell being related to the Ford first Ford factory in America, Henry Ford. What we're seeing here when we're told about the Roswell incident, the UFO that was found there was the very first UFO humans and whoever else was living with us at the time created. It was created that long ago in another galaxy in a binary star system for interplanetary travel in that binary system. It wasn't even an interstellar device. That's how long ago we're talking about how old this thing is. The thing you reverse engineered here is possibly, I would expect, we're showing that this management was taking place 80 million years ago. We're talking about populating all the stars in the star array that I've showed you, or that would appear to only have taken 300 years. But we are very advanced when we came here. 
So what you've got left here was in actual fact that possibly is 200 million years, not the 80 million years that I had specified at a previous, in a previous video. So I would expect, like I said, there is no war to be had here. This is why the leaders of the earth that I've just told you about, that know they're going, they're going to get taken away and they've tried to kill as many people on this planet as possible. So there was nobody to take. That was their their um, approach to the situation rather than tell everybody what needed to happen. They're more worried about land prices and wealth and riches and losing their money to the point they hit the rest of this. I would expect, like I said, I don't expect everybody in their lot know the entire truth either. But anyway, um, I think that was a good place to finish up today. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found the video interesting. Um, I know I wish you all a very, very happy Easter. And I have tried to have these people tell the truth. And I'm glad that I stuck to my guns to the point that we now know exactly what caused the problem. That uh, man in his adventure through space created the devil. Um, and unfortunately, um, if you think they don't know about what I've just told you about, the second galaxy and the second planet and the second star scenario, um, I want you to think about this, if you would. The choice they had at that point in time and the only way they would have gotten rid of the problem and it seems to be about 10% of the population that you know some races that get a little bit more affected than others it would have gone right through everybody because it was something that was passed on through you know uh, relationships between each other it may have been something of that nature certainly spread right through the whole lot of us to get rid of it at that point in time, they would have had to kill everybody, including themselves, so it means everybody that came from the other galaxy, possibly billions of people by this stage, or get rid of the problem, or filter the problem by actually creating the problem and working backwards as such, which is what we're doing here. So, which is why we see our, se our races separate here. Um, so, like I said, they were choice was they either killed everybody or they create the cycle that creates the problem to filter the good people out of it. So you've actually got to create the bad guys. So that's that's the actual situation. Now I want you, if you think they didn't even know that, go and have a look at the term catch twenty two, because that is exactly what it's talking about. And uh, that is a good way for me to finish this video. And like I said, I uh, wish you all a very happy Easter. And uh, um, I hope we all get to the other side of things and do not panic or stress with the people coming back here. Certainly aren't coming back here to kill us. And the people that have generated all these stories, I can tell you now that are you people out there that pushing these mysteries where none exists, telling us we've got amnesia when you can see by the bombs and the flags and all such things that um, people know very well what's going down here and there are many people out there that get plenty of books, plenty of media coverage because the people that run our world know that they are telling lies and they're just pushing these narratives to drag you away from the truth. Um, I don't publish books Everything on my channel here is free, and I have a feeling, like I said, had I not have taken that approach, I probably wouldn't have got to the end of the story. Um, but that is all from me, um, and I wish you all well, and like I said, Happy Easter. Have a good one. This is Brian Whitten and ETR. Thank you very much. Bye.